Hello and welcome to Hacks, where we try and simplify cybersecurity. Today we are continuing our HackThisSite.org series and looking at basic number 8. If you don't know what Hack This Site is, basically it's a website that allows you to test out your web application hacking skills. So, this challenge, Sam remains confident that an obscure password file is still the best idea, but he screwed up with the calendar system. Sam has saved the unencrypted password file in var www.hackthissite.org html missions basic 8. However, Sam's younger daughter, Stephanie, has just learned programming. She is talented for her age, but she knows nothing about security. That's good for us. She recently learned about saving files and she wrote a script to demonstrate her ability. So there are a couple of takeaways from this information. The first is that it's actually included the full file path, which suggests to me that we're going to need it at some point, or we're just going to need to know the structure of the application in order to complete the challenge. The second is, bless her heart, Stephanie is just started to learn PHP, but she knows nothing about security. So this is her part of the web application here, and I assume it's going to be the part that we need to exploit. So let's throw in some test data and see how it gets processed. I'm going to start by submitting test. And as you can see here, your file has been saved. So we know it's writing files. So we can click here to view it. Hi, test. Your name is four characters. OK, so it's doing some base, basic arithmetic based on the user input. And yeah, it's writing whatever we submit to a file. What we also know is that it's saving as an shtml file in the tmp directory. Now we know that the password isn't stored in the tmp directory, so whatever we're going to do, we'll have to do it so it goes up another directory. Now, the shtml file also suggests that it's use, using server-side includes. Now, server-side includes are bits of code in separate files that you can reference within the source code of an application multiple times. So let me give you an example. If you had a basic HTML site with a header along the top and a menu along the side, a bit like hack this site, so you've got the header across the top here and then you've got this menu on the side here. What you could do is you could code the header and the menu separately and put them in a separate file called header.shtml and menu.shtml. Then on every page that you want to include them on, you would reference the file using a server-side include command. Um, now server-side include commands, they usually start with an open or uh, less than sign with an exclamation mark, uh, then your double dash and then a hash or pound sign. And then you would have your directive, or you would have the function followed by the directory. So what we're going to do here is we're going to tell it to execute the command directive. And what the command directive does is it will pass it to the operating system and execute whatever command you tell it to. So for this one, we're going to say command equals, and then we're going to do ls because we want to list out the contents of the directory. But if you remember, the path that the shtml file is in is temp so what we want to do is we want to go up a directory so we'll just use double dot forward slash then from there we need to quote it out and then we need to end the command so you should have less than exclamation mark double dash pound the command to ex the exe function the command directory command directive, sorry I can't speak today, and then the ls command that you want to execute followed by the directory that you want to execute it on. Now if we submit that, we should have the stage in the application where the payload is going to get processed. So we're going to process the payload now, and what that will do is that should then write the results of the ls command to the shtml file. So there's like separate stages. First you inject the payload then when you click click here that will be executing the payload and storing the results in the shtml file which in this case is the results of the ls command listing out the directory above tmp 
However, if you notice from the URL, the file is still in TMP. So we're still writing to TMP, but we're actually listing out the contents above it. And you can see there, you've got your standard index.php, your level8.php, that's going to be your password submission script. And we know that the temp directory is inside the 8 directory. So if we grab the PHP file, and then we append it to the URL, but before TMP, because we know it's in level 8, because Sam told us, we should get the password. And if we take that, and just go back to the 8 directory, hopefully it'll load the index page, that's good. And we can just submit the password, and we should get a congratulations complete. So the lessons that can be learned from this uh, challenge, despite me needing to learn to speak better, is that, again, you need to sanitize user inputs. Um, if you're allowing users to submit anything into web forms, you could leave your web application vulnerable to exploits such as cross-site scripting, remote code execution, and in this instance, server-side include injection. Um, I'm not sure how common this is in the wild. Injection attacks were obviously on the OWASP top 10, so they're still quite a serious issue, but I've not come across an actual server-side include injection attack before in the wild. Um, but yeah, that's, that's really it. You need to sanitize user input, always treat it as untrusted data because computers do weird things when you, uh, when you pass it system commands or special characters that escape, uh, certain commands. Anyway, I'm rambling on, uh, but that's all I have for you today. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did give it a thumbs up and maybe subscribe and I'll see you next time for basic number nine. Thanks. Goodbye. Please hang up and try again.